The last week, so many people asked me what I think about the new Tenere 700 rally rate. In my opinion, this is a brilliant move from the company. Well done, Yamaha. Well done. Let me repeat it. It is a brilliant move from the company. But, as you know, everything that you say before but is shit. Everything that you're going to say after that, it really matters. In this video, I'm going to share my opinion on this topic. So if you have nothing to do, grab your favorite drink and stay with me. Welcome back. As usual, I will try to be as honest as possible and show you one different perspective. Some of you will like it, some will hate it, but it is what it is. I am what I am. It is too late to change myself. If you're patient enough to stay until the end of the video, I promise uh, one very useful information for all Tenere owners. Anyway, let's start with the topic and before we go deep into my personal thoughts, let's see first what the new Tenere Rally Rate has to offer. 23 liters capacity dual side mounted fuel tanks, flat rally inspired 2 piece seat, 5 inch color TFT display with mobile notification connectivity, USB tip A, 3 mode switchable ABS, high specifications 43mm Kayaba front forks with 230mm travel, all in adjustable steering damper, aluminum Peggy Rack rear shock with 220mm wheel travel, high windscreen, easy to remove side deflectors and LED flushers, fully new cockpit area and new front cowling. New larger rider footrest with easy to remove rubber inserts, three piece aluminum engine guard, new aluminum die cast engine support, and new radiator grill. All of these great features come with only 2000 euros price difference. This sounds interesting, isn't it? It really does. As I said before, this was a brilliant move from the company, and I am absolutely sure that they already created a huge demand for this model around Europe and maybe very soon everywhere around the world. The life that I have had taught me one very realistic lesson or a point of view that I use all the time. So if I have to explain to you what exactly it is with a few words, it will be that uh, there will be always someone better, bigger, clever, richer than you. And it doesn't matter how hard you try, you cannot change this fact. You might say, Pavlin, you promised to talk about the new Tenere. What is this philosophical lesson? Yes, you're right, I'm really sorry about it, but I believe that a good two minutes introduction will help much more than hundreds of clear facts and numbers. The first and maybe the most important feature was uh, 23 liters dual side mounted petrol tanks with the proper caps. Brilliant, isn't it? As you already know, my opinion about larger tanks is different, but even so, Let's focus on it and read the small print. By having two separate tanks that are positioned lower and locating the fuel pump in lower position in one of the tanks, the bike center of gravity can be kept almost the same as with the existing Tenere 700 that has 16 liters or 4.2 gallons tank. From what I understood, the bike will remain top heavy. This was the biggest complaint from mostly off-road riders, right? Okay, we have to admit that they kept the same center of gravity with larger tank, which is big plus for Yamaha, but don't forget that the overall weight of the model rose from 204 to 220 kilograms. And you might say, Pavlen, this is only 16 kilograms, 220 is not that bad. That's correct, I never said that it's that bad, but my entire luggage for my trips is 15 kilograms. At least this is something that you have to think about. I would like to add something that might be pointless on this stage, but because it came to my mind, I cannot stop thinking about it. It is about these two double side mounted petrol tanks. I know that they look great on paper and they definitely help with a lower center of gravity. That's why all the car bikes has it, right? I am sure that you still remember the KTM models 950 and 990. They were with double side mounted tanks. It was a brilliant idea, like revolution in design, but because I have the chance to spend a lot of time in my friend's plumber's garage, I have seen him remove and mount these tanks many times. I'm not going to quote his exact words because probably YouTube will ban me from violation the terms, but I hope that you get the idea. From many years of hard use, from all of this heat, cold and everything, these tanks are get deformed, they've got a different shape and it was not easy at all to mount it on the proper place. Even if you have the original bolts and washers and everything, it was a real, real pain in the ass to have it 
the tanks back on the frame. This actually is not that bad compared to the rest of the problems that these dual side tanks create like uh, overheating the engine, boiling the petrol inside of the tanks, not enough room for uh, cooling, fun and, and many many more. I'm not even going to discuss the procedure that you have to follow when you fill the tanks. There is a specific procedure that you have to follow and if you do it wrong it will be a possible leaks of petrol from the tanks. Most of the owners of the models learn about these problems the hard way so they need to come to some really strange solutions like to have aluminum foil under the tank to prevent the petrol inside of boiling or to redesign a new second uh, cooling fan because the engine overheat very fast or I have seen a people having a different brackets here and there with different fans and different solutions or different ways to mount or remove the tanks and because of all of these problems KTM stopped this from production line as you know the new models now comes with a different petrol tank with different shape but definitely not a dual side petrol tank I really hope that the uh, engineers from Yamaha did a better job with their production line. The rest of the features, flat rally inspired two-piece seat. I really cannot see a big difference with the old model except the front part. 5-inch color TFT display with mobile notification connectivity, USB type A, 3 mode switchable ABS. These are the things that I do not have any interest but I am sure that many will be excited about so I will remain silent. The next is high specifications 43mm upside down Kayaba Fox with 230mm of travel. This might sound like a lot in the specification sheets or in the off-road world but in reality it's only like this 3 centimeters. The new preload option that they had on the new forks here on the top is great but as I said in the previous video you can easily have the same effect if you just have 2 cm spacers or 3 cm or whatever is good for you but uh, because they said nothing about the springs rate I guess that the springs rate remain the same which is mean that they are set for a rider 70 to 80 kilograms so you basically have got the same forks with 3 centimeters more travel and preload on the top all in adjustable steering damper this actually is a great feature but let's be honest an average Joe has no idea what it's about which is mean that he can live without it aluminum peggy back rear shock 220 millimeters wheel travel I already told you what I think about it it is just two three centimeters nothing more high windscreen easy to remove side deflectors LED flashers fully new cockpit area and new front cowling new larger rider footrest easy to remove rubber inserts again I cannot find any big difference with the old so I will remain silent three pieces aluminum engine guard new aluminum diecast engine support new radiator grill I understand that now they have to redesign a lot of plastics around the petrol tank and radiator guard to match the white petrol tank that they have had and for those of you who prefer to have this fatty look it will be much better bike but I honestly prefer the slim version of the model the engine, the frame, the brakes and the overall design have no or almost invisible changes so they basically remain the same but one of the most annoying or the worst designed elements of this model was the muffler bracket and it remains the same so I'm really sorry guys but we have to wait maybe for the next model to see something with better design in this part of the bike so is this really much better bike this is a good question isn't it I'm gonna answer it this way the new Tenere 700 rally rate it's a brilliant move from the company in the right direction but only the future will show us do they have done it right I will finish this video with one of my favorite phrases the bike is just a tool the travel is what really matters I know that you love your motorcycle but it doesn't change the fact that it is just a tool maybe it's the most expensive tool that you ever had with some kind of sentimental value but it is still a tool focus on the trip focus on the people that you are going to meet and the places that you're going to see and you will not even remember the bike after you come back home I promise you this and now because at the beginning of the video I told you that I, I'm gonna tell you about uh, uh, information that I got in the recent days just stay for a few more minutes and many of the 
future or the present tenere owners may benefit from it. In one of my previous videos, I talked about the wobbling on the front end of my new Tenere 700. I told you that I've got the feeling that it is from the tire. And I spoke with many Tenere owners, at least more than 10, and they shared exactly the same experience. The tire was moving like this. When I released the handlebar, it was moving like that, especially on the low speed when you chop the throttle. So I told that it is from the tire and when I spoke with so many people, I finally decided to change it. And I did it today. And uh, when I remove the tire and the wheel from the bike, the first thing that I did, I put it on the machine and I watched the balance. And the balance was absolutely perfect, zero. But I was able to see how the tire moved like this in one spot, was moving like this. Then we removed the tire and inspect the rim. The rim was absolutely perfect. Only the tire was some kind of bent or twisted. I don't know, it's a brand new tire on 1,500 kilometers. The second point that I've got to share was uh, the original tube. It was Pirelli tube, but made in China. And I don't know why, but every two weeks I have to add at least one atmosphere. It was dropping the air constantly all the time. So today I changed my tire with Continental Take EC 80 with a new tube Michelin 4 millimeters. And the bike now is smooth as a hell. It is fantastic. I just love it. I still have a lot of tire noise coming from the rear, but I'm going to wait and finish this tire and probably change it with Take EC. At least now I do not have the wobbling, which was really, really annoying from the front tire. That's it for today, guys. If you just spent a two seconds to give me thumbs up or down, whatever the video deserves will be great. Always ride safe and see you next time.